Michał Kwiatkowski. The GCN show this week. We've got a full rundown from the world. Michał Kwiatkowski. Tech news that's definitely been worth waiting for. We've also got team news plus Strava Club, our caption of the week, and our comment of the week. It's a nice beer, by the way, then. Um, yeah, cheers, mate. I've got this uh, new product I've been using. I'll talk about it a bit later, maybe. Oh, nice. Interesting. Uh, that was grotty. Our racing news this week, of course, centres around the World Championships, which were being held in Ponferrada in Spain. The women's time trial was an exceptionally closely fought match amongst the top three. Reigning champion Ellen van Dijk of the Netherlands had a bit of an off day, finishing one minute and 11 seconds off the pace. The benchmark time was set by the young Ukrainian Solovey. And Evelyn Stevens of the US did manage to push her close, however no one toppled the young Ukrainian until Lisa Brenau of Germany stormed round the last part of the course to add the World Individual Time Trial Championships to the team one that she's picked up with specialised Lululemon earlier in the week. We, uh, we did mention Brenau, didn't we, in the uh, previous show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think Matt talked about her. We got it covered. We yeah, we covered did, yeah, definitely. Yeah, had it covered. Fine. Lisa Brenau. So, those are the favourites, Matt. Who's your actual money on? Yeah, Van Dyke, really. What about you, Si? Uh, just to be different, I'm going to say Van Vluten. Caption of the week now. Last week, we gave you Alberto Contador standing on the podium at the final of the Vuelta. And the winner is... Ha! <laughs> huh, I came first. <laughs> In your face, through me. That's right, Daniel Lloyd. Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I've won it. Absolutely, mate. That was that caption oh couldn't be beaten. What was so, the prize uh, again? Uh, it was my t-shirt. Oh, cheers, mate. Go on, put it on. I have to, don't have to put it on. Go on, put it on, mate. Don't be ungrateful. Everyone wanted to win that this week, and uh, and you got it. <laughs> nice, mate. Looking good. Just uh, arms up quickly. Arms up. Amazing. Nice. Cheers. That's quite a good. Good uh, can that. Anyway, we have got another prize to give away, and so for the first time ever, we're going to have a runner up one who will receive a lovely GCN cap because I don't need any more. And that one is for a visual caption which came in from Vladimir Yegarev. You got any captions for that, Dan? Um, yeah. Uh, my name's Simon Richardson. Nice to meet you. This is uh, my preferred lube. <laughs> anyway, this week's picture is this one of Matt Stevens on the floor with a dog. I'll get you started again. Not too sure about this new Nutella scented chamois cream I'm using. Now it's always going to be a tough job to get close to the two clear favourites in the men's individual time trial. That being of course reigning world champion Tony Martin and reigning Olympic champion Bradley Wiggins. And so it proved to be. It was effectively a two horse race with Martin and Wiggins still very very close together at the second intermediate check. Wiggins, however, flew over the final hilly part of the course, eventually taking the win by 26 seconds over a disappointed Tony Martin. And young Dutchman Tom de Moulin of the Netherlands showed that he is going to be one to watch as he took third place. In the post-race press conference, Tony Martin promised that he will be back to get revenge and retake his World Time Trial title, a job that might be made easier by the fact that Wigo said that this will be his last World Road Race Championships. We, uh, we did mention Wiggins in the preview show, didn't we? I think so, mate. Yeah, I think we okay. yeah we got it covered. We had it covered. Of course, so, yeah. I think it's going to be Tony Martin again. His form has just been relentless. I'm going to stick with that, Tony Martin. I'll go with Tony as well, but I'd love to see Brad win. Kill you. <laughs> Do you ride for a club? Do you think it deserves a shout out on GCN? Tell us who you are, why your club is great, and if you're lucky and we feel you deserve it, we'll mention you on the GCN show and maybe even send you some swag to give away as your own prize. Just make sure that all your club mates subscribe to GCN because we will be checking. We will definitely be checking. In fact, we need proof. The first of the senior elite road races was the women's event on Saturday. Unfortunately, though, the early part of the race was characterised by a huge high-speed pileup, which took out a number of riders, including the entire Canadian team. And it took a while for the remaining riders in the race to regroup. And in fact, most of the action came on the last lap of the race. In fact, the last climb, four of the favourites went on the attack. Voss, Armitstead, Longo Borghini and Johansson. And they looked to have built up an unassailable lead. That was until they started looking at each other, almost within sight of the line, allowing the pursuers to get back on. 
And it was Pauline Ferrand Prevost of France who took full advantage, adding the World Road Race Championships to her national road, time trial and mountain bike titles. Lisa Brenauer announced herself as rider of the entire week by taking the silver medal and Emma Johansson of Sweden cemented her title as Queen of Consistency with the bronze. We, uh, we did talk about Prevost and we in our previous show. I'm going for Annemiek van Vluten. Yeah, of course we bloody did. Stop asking. All right, now, We've got forget, it covered. I'm Anna Voss. I forget how, how right covered. we got it. I forget how right we were. Yeah. Mariana Voss. 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 It's GCN, man. Of course. GCN Strava Club this week and Louis Pierre Dupuis has had another big week, comfortably topping the distance category with 1,139 kilometres ridden. Rob Smallman did the longest ride whilst Brian Toon climbed over 21,000 metres. Don't forget if you haven't already joined up for our Strava Club, it's easy and it's free. Just search for GCN on Strava and click join. The Elite Men's Championships were started under particularly damp conditions and as with the other races, the majority of the action took part in the latter part of the day. Michael Vulgren of Denmark. <laughs> Michael Vulgren absolutely made the race. He attacked with two laps to go, drawing clear Demarki, also Goethe of France and the Belarusian Vasil Kirienka later bridged the cross. They held a nice 50 second advantage going into the final lap where Spain had to put a bloody spanner in the works by chasing from the remaining peloton behind. And by the top of the penultimate climb their lead was down to just 15 seconds. And it was here that Mikhail Kwiatkowski made his move, showing balls of steel by attacking on the fast and wet descent. Michał Kwiatkowski. He quickly bridged across and then attacked the front group. With Volgren the last of that front group to remain with Kwiatkowski, making an absolute valiant effort and showing he was the strongest of those four and well, one of the strongest in the race, really. Michael Volgren. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, Tom. Anyway, so Kwiatkowski, by the top of the final climb, had a gap of eight seconds and he valiantly held off a chase group stacked with some of the big, big favourites. And Volgren came in in 20th place, looking every bit a future world champion. I think you'll agree. Full gas. Full gas? Yeah. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Simon Gerrans finished second and uh, Alejandro Valverde added to his medal tally with third place. Forgot about the other medals, yeah. Come on, Dan, stop whinging. <clears throat> Dan, I, um, I don't think we mentioned Kwiatkowski in the previous show. Um, we didn't mention Kwiatkowski, he was uh, one of the favourites. Uh, well, he was my favourite. Was he your favourite? Yeah, I thought he was going to win. Can we sort that, guys? For Can we just sort that out so we look okay? Uh, Michał Kwiatkowski. Um, Michał Kwiatkowski. Michał Kwiatkowski. Feels good when predictions go well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, we, we nailed this, week, this week's World Champs. Actually. We bossed it, Dan. You bossed it, yeah. like a boss. <laughs> Giant Shimano have successfully found a new title sponsor, German hair product manufacturer Alpha Sim. It shows that some of the damage done to German professional cycling in the wake of the T-Mobile scandal is slowly being repaired, what with Alpacin and also Team Bora replacing NetApp for NetApp Endura. Yeah, it's interesting stuff, this uh, Alpacin. They've got this one product that stimulates hair growth. I've been uh, using it on my face, as you can see. Oh yeah, it's a little bit patchy. I've been using it as well, but um, just as uh, body wash. Why anyway. is it grey? I don't know. Why is your ginger? All right. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see whether Marcel Kittel will have a beard at the end of the season. Good question. Um... Next season. Be a bit quick, wouldn't it? Yeah. It takes a long time to grow facial hair if you're uh, not that way inclined. I don't actually know. Tech of the Week this week comes from Castelli. Now, it might not be relevant to all of you, but spare a thought for those of us that are currently staring down the barrel of another long, arduous winter. Luckily, Riding in those conditions doesn't have to be quite so arduous as it did back in the times of woolen garments because there's some great modern materials out in the market and Castelli have brought out this new Alpha jacket. The garment is not only windproof but also water resistant but the biggest difference to conventional jackets is an extra zip layer up the inside. The idea behind this is that you can cool off if you need to without getting a sudden rush of freezing air directly onto your chest and core. Um, armpit zips, like vents. No, why is that? I'm just wondering. To, sometimes it's a nice to have. You may have noticed that that was filmed just before Dan started using Alpacin. Good stuff, mate. I think mean, it's grown during the show. Well, clearly it's grown since this morning when we filmed it. <laughs> 
On to transfer stroke MTN Quebec news now. And just days after being crowned World Under-23 time trial champion, Australian Campbell Flakemore announced that he will be riding for BMC next year, along with two other promising talents, Joey Roscoff and Manuel Seni. Tom Stigent will make the switch from Omega Pharma Quickstep to Lotto Benesol on a two-year deal. And the team will be known as Lotto Sudal. Rory Sutherland has penned a two-year deal with the Mobistar team and will move over from the Tinkoff Saxa team which he was riding for for the last two years and according to the Spanish website BGG Clismo they'll be also adding to their Colombian contingent having signed winner Anacona from Lamprey Merida. You know um, winner Anacona and Tom Last are related. Are they? Mm. Yeah winner and Last. Distant relatives. Yeah, long lost cousins. <laughs> And this section is nothing without MTN Quebec, it would seem. Three of their current riders, Christian Sparagy, Jack Jensen van Rensburg and Jaco Venter, have all extended their contracts. Not quite as interesting as the last couple of weeks. I think they're going to have to buck their ideas up a bit if they want to retain a section of the GCN show. Absolutely. Comments of the week this week, Dan. Has anything grabbed your attention? Uh, yeah, one thing. I wanted to keep it a bit more concise this week after going a bit overboard about your pits last week. But Madge Cloud said, Whoa, just look how fast Dan Lloyd was going. Never mind pros, this guy takes it to a whole other level. And don't forget his stunning youthfulness. Dan Lloyd, you have done it again. I see you as a political figure, one with power and charisma. I see you as a righteous, pierced man, one of selflessness. Why do I see this? Because he is truly holy. My word. I think he's being slightly sarcastic. No? Why would he do? Can't see why he'd do that. No, no, no. no. Anyway, uh, it's interesting actually because the comment that I picked out this week actually uh, on another video uh, was this one from uh, Tudor Michal. Dan, you are now less powerful than my blender. Which is probably true. And uh, you're significantly less useful, I would have mm. thought as well. That was below the training of power video. I think that one was sarcastic. The second one, yeah. How powerful is a blender? Well, not as powerful as me, surely. I could blend. We've got a couple of beetroots, as we call them here in the UK. Over in the US, of course, they're just called beets, but we added that extra word in just to separate them from the Dr. Dre headphones. The whole video series there, will it blend with Dan Lloyd? <laughs> mm, that tastes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> After a career which has spanned 20 years, firstly on the mountain bikes and then on the road, Cadell Evans will finally hang up his wheels next year. The 37-year-old became the first ever Australian to win the World Championships in 2009 and then the Tour de France, which he did two years later. Cadell will ride the Tour Down Under in January and then his career will finish at the inaugural Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race on February the 1st. You know, when I look at it, his career has kind of mimicked mine. First on the mountain bike, then on the road. And, and mine. Oh, yeah, good point. And lasties. Not, not Matt's. Not Matt. <laughs> no, not Matt. <laughs> Loads more great content for you on the channel this week. On Monday, we showed you how to reduce your risks of punctures. A 60 to 70 kilo rider should look at about 90 to 100 psi and 80 kilos plus should be looking at about 110 psi, maybe even a little bit more. On Tuesday, well, it's the GCN program show. Why do I keep saying program? Welcome to the GCN program. And on Wednesday, we're going to show you how to set up and form a breakaway. Getting a gap on the bunch doesn't usually come easily, and often this part of the race is actually the hardest. Only when the gap to the peloton reaches a minute can you start to ease up. On Thursday, we've got the top 10 things not to drink while riding. Matt and I have been taking a few lessons from Dan here. If you like me, make a love at midnight in the jeans of the cape and the love that you look for right to me and escape. <laughs> On Friday, we've got Road Tubeless. Is it worth it? Now, we would show you some clips about that, but we actually haven't made up our minds just yet. And on Saturday, we've got a video about Matt's relationship with his bike. Turns out that Matt didn't actually completely invent the flight deck. He's actually found a component with it on. On a bike? Yeah, on an actual bike. Where? Look, it says flight deck. Honest, just right there. Flight deck. <laughs> Tweet of the week this week is from poor old Dan Martin after the World Championships. Anyone know where I can get some luck? I'll draw the line at Virgin Suicide.
I thought you'd talk about luck of the Irish, don't you? <laughs> we shall leave you this week with Extreme Corner. Now, we were really looking forward to the Red Bull Rampage. Rampage. Rampage, yes, but it was raining and it seems that these extreme riders actually don't ride in the rain. Well, they did show us this from practice, which looks pretty darn extreme. Big drop, getting ready for the canyon. And he flips the canyon! What a wake up call for everyone here in the qualifiers! But Matt's on his way there too. He's now venturing off road, but just one small step at a time. Oh, John, lots of speed, carried through, and he just hits it perfectly. He is heading down, not afraid to blaze his own trail. Something very original the judges are going to be taking note of. He is also a style cat. He is a well-rounded rider, and you're seeing nice. that right now as he goat pads this traverse to make it into the mid-level features. Nice high-speed tabletop step down. Big step down, hitting the Polaris. RCR hip, and he pulls a backflip <laughs> over the hip. Nice style. High speed, good flow, all bases covered in this run. Remember that if you like DCM videos, click on the little thumbs up button in the bottom of this video. Tell us you like it. And if you really, really, really like our videos and you never want to miss another one of them, well, you've just got to subscribe. You can do that by clicking on my face.